What is the science mission here, first of all, and then we can talk about the different pieces of equipment. Okay, so one of the big puzzles of our closest star, the Sun, is uh, its surface temperature is around 6,000 degrees and suddenly it rises very, very quickly to over a million degrees. So the big question is what is causing this sudden rise? Where is the heat source? What is contributing to it? And of course, the, 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 this atmosphere doesn't stop at the sun. It's, it expands into the whole heliosphere. And it fills it, uh, it fills it by this outflow that's called the solar wind. So in our, uh, our, our goal in the eclipse observations is we, the observations cover a region of space that's very critical to understanding the physics of the corona. It starts at the solar surface, surface and can extend all the way out to several solar radii above the surface. And at present, there is no instrument, whether in space or from the ground, that can span this distance range. And it's really very important to see how the gas evolves, how the magnetic fields evolve, and how all this outflow is really determined by um, what's happening very, very close to the sun. And why is it easier to observe this during an eclipse than other observational uh, opportunities? Okay, so so during a, a total solar eclipse, uh, in the visible wavelength range, uh, you have uh, it just by some fortuitous uh, uh, coincidence. The sun, um, the corona emits. Uh, there are ele all elements that you observe on Earth are exist there, and but they are ionized to different uh, ionization. They have lost electrons at, at different uh, in different quantities, and the most abundant is iron. So iron, you can find emission. So these, uh, these uh, ionized uh, atoms, they emit light at different wavelengths. And by uh, as, uh, capturing the emission from these different ionization states, we can have a very nice uh, coverage of the temperature distribution in the corona. But the most important thing is that in the visible, the emission isn't dominated by collisions between uh, ions or ions and electrons, but it's dominated by, it's basically the ions getting excited by the photons coming from the sun. They, 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 there's this resonant excitation when the two frequencies match and you have this emission. And because it depends only on the number of ions and not the square number of ions and electrons, the intensity doesn't drop as quickly uh, from the sun as if it were a density square effect. Uh, so it's this, this uh, effect that enables the emission to, uh, to be observed out to several solar radii. And it's, it's only the lines in the coron lines in the visible that have this nice property. The eclipse is also very special for capturing these lines because with a man-made occulter or what we call a coronograph, you can never dim the background sky with the same way as the, a, a, an object the size of the moon. So the sky basically turns uh, almost like nighttime. And the, very, the corona that's a million times fainter than the surface of the sun becomes visible. Now with a, 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 like an occulter or what we call a coronagraph on the ground or from space, you don't get this, uh, well, I should, I should say that a coronagraph from the ground doesn't get this, uh, this dimming. So you can't see very far from the sun. From space, the, the current coronagraphs uh, uh, occult the sun, but occult more than just the surface. They go over, they extend about a radius, and then they start to see the extended corona. So you're missing this very important inner part. If the instruments, and unfortunately at present, there is no instrument in space that has either an imager that selects these uh, emission from the iron lines or an, uh, or a spectrometer that uh, observes these, uh, you know, all the lines in, in the chrome spectrum. So everybody's doing white light, you know, which is just the, the uh, emission from the electrons uh, the, that are uh, be, uh, that are scattering the the photons from the sun towards the observer, they give you this very nice, what we call white light image from the sun, but it doesn't have information about the different elements, 
uh, it doesn't have information about the temperature and uh, and the composition of the corona. So that's what's missing in all uh, the existing instruments. All right, so we've had an opportunity to understand why having the, the sun blocked so we can view just the corona and learn about the uh, do spectroscopy on the corona, which we can't otherwise do. Um, so now give us a little um, tour of the instrumentation and systems you'll be using for this observation. Okay, so this uh, instrument here, this uh, rectangular box and the lens is a, a spectrometer that was uh, kind of uh, the concept uh, and the design are the brainchild of uh, Professor Adalbert Ding from, uh, from Berlin. And uh, so he came, it, it has uh, very unique properties in the sense that the observations allow us to look at a, a huge range of spectral lines and uh, to identify what the lines are. Sometimes it's, uh, it's not so, if you know, if there are some strong lines in the corona which you would know uh, right away which ones they are, but sometimes there are fainter lines or lines you don't expect to exist in the corona. And, and these this, spectral lines are going to be representative of different elements. Exactly, different right. elements or uh, the same element but different ionization states of, mm. of the same element. So this year, because of we're operating on a, on a vessel, so we had to come up with stabilizing uh, um, uh, structures. So this one, this gimbal is called a Ronin, which is used in, mostly in the movie industry. And uh, so the size of the spectrometer had to be reduced to fit, to be able to be held by this uh, gimbal. And uh, the weight is uh, also had to be uh, just right so that it could be operated. And yes. its operation, uh, uh, the way it's fitted into the Ronin is very unusual because that's not how they use it in the movie industry, at an angle and this this uh, part tilted. But Adi uh, figured out how to take advantage of all the properties of the gimbal to use it for our for this experiment. So this will, in theory, <laughs> and I think in practice, since it's been tested, yes. will stabilize the uh, the spectrometer for the observation. Right. And how long is this uh, eclipse going to last? What's the, the amount of time for totality? It depends on our location in the sea. It's anywhere between a minute and a half to a minute and 50 seconds. So a lot of work going into a couple yes. of minutes of observation. Yes. Um, fantastic. Yeah. And um, maybe you can tell us about the, uh, the other instruments uh, that are here in the yes. room being set up. Okay, so what you actually just sh showed us was a system designed to look at the iron 10 yes. spectral line, uh -huh. and this is the other one this for one the iron 14? iron 14. Okay, and so we have it's Yanni and Petter working on this as we speak. Yes. So this is science in action. <laughs> Thankfully getting the system ready. Do you want to describe a little bit again? Okay, so here you can clearly see the CMOS cameras that we're using in the back, the, the reddish cameras, then we have a lens, and then uh, in the front are the uh, uh, two uh, filters, and we have a small video camera attached to the side for uh, basically to check the pointing and make sure we're, uh, we're looking at the right, at the corona, we have the corona in, inside our field of view. Now these have a different gimbal system apparently, so they're no, This one is like this one, mm -hmm. and they're both called the crane, it's different from the Ronin. And this one, we're basically maxed uh, the capability of the crane with the weight mm -hmm. and what it could handle. So we couldn't handle anything bigger than this weight-wise weight -wise mm -hmm. or even size-wise.